you described improv as the experience of putting on an oxygen mask. And you've said that you need to put your own oxygen mask on first before you put it on for others because you need to yes and yourself. You need to really believe in your own character and the scene. You just spoke about this as well yeah. before you try to bring the audience or the other actors on board as well. I'm curious how that works for you because you've studied acting. You've mainly studied the Strasbourg technique as well, yeah. which really asks you to get deep inside a character's emotional state and really feel what that character is feeling. In the process of trying to yes and yourself, do you feel you can fall prey to this, uh, to this, I guess, this nagging voice inside you to put on a great acting performance because of the Strasbourg technique and get deep into the emotion? And then I guess what you're trying to do at that point is put on a good acting performance but not drive the improv scene forward. Do you think you can fall prey to that? Yes. I think you, and I'm going to go, yes. And I remember, like, sometimes you have to kind of fake it till you make it, Right. And I remember, you know, because in Strasbourg, like you, you, you read up, you know your stuff. It you have to um, a lot of the times if you're not connecting with a certain character, how do you get in there, right? Um, and so those are that it's like a technique, tool belt, uh, how you can get in there. A lot of the times you don't need it. Sometimes a, a, a role might just fit like a couture suit, you know, and it's just like I am this this part. Um, but I think in improv. Uh, I mean, it's just such a challenge because you never know. You kind of don't know sometimes who you're going to play, right? Um, I don't know if that's if that's really answering the question. Is it possible that if there's ever been a scene where the kite has to cry and you start really giving it all and then in midway through you realize, oh, that's not... I'm supposed to drive the scene and not really show the audience how well I can act in the, a crying scene? Oh, I think... I, I used to hesitate to cry on stage or pretend to cry. You know, I, I can make people believe it, though, because I can start to make myself believe it because I've faked it until I've made it enough. But um, I, I mean, I think I can make you, you know, but uh, um, I don't think so. I think if you're really grounded in what's hurting that person in the comedy of it and you're able to, like, you know, call it out and, and contextualize and make fun of it. Um, if you're really selling it and really acting it, as long as it doesn't derail the story, I don't think there's a there's a, a problem with it. I don't think I've ever, I've probably been a little hammy sometimes and like played it up too much, but I think usually I do the right amount of crying for a character, I think in improv at least. I uh, think hamming it up works because uh, <laughs> I think it was Mick Napier who said in his, I think improvise, improvise that's the book he wrote, but he said that to get good at improv, learn acting first because it really helps you drive that conviction in the scene forward. Once the audience hooked, then you can start bringing all the context in. You got to well. hook them. They got to care about the characters because because if they don't care about the characters, then the scene doesn't matter and it all starts starts to like feel the same. But if they care and and you know we didn't necessarily make them laugh, but they cared about our characters. That's something that that's something. I mean, that's at least something. And I guarantee it, and you're going to be easier. It's going to be easier to, to make them laugh if uh, if you make them care and there's that tension, you know, um.